For second video module, we'll be talking about the endoscope stem. Okay, so we talk about in the lecture, but we just uh, uh, still do a little bit of introduction here. So what is in the spore and uh, how we do it? So first of all, you need to know, there is a two species of the bacteria has in the spore, which is bacillus and clostridium. Bacillus, basically, we talk about the bacillus, the subtilis, and the bacillus cereus. Now clostridium, we're going to talk about more later. Clostridium per fringens, clostridium difficile, clostridium botulining, and uh, uh, clostridium tetanus. Now, especially across Australia, you should know this is gram positive. Lots, but it's strict anaerobic bacteria, which means there is no SOD and uh, catalase. So they cannot hydrolyze so called. H2O2 or O3, these toxication material during the respiration process. Okay, so this is basic knowledge. Second, so what is endospore? Now you need to know endospore is a protection, protection structure. The function is protection. In a harsh fall and a very stress environment, Let's say heat, or cold, or even like acid, or like there is some chemical inactivation. Those are a stress environment. They will form in those spots. It's a protection function. So here is something we also want to mention. If the mother cell has in those spots, does not mean the daughter cell will naturally has in those spots. Because if they are not in a stress environment, the endospore actually will become germination. So it will become just a vegetative cell, which means a normal cell in growth. Will not form endospore. Okay? Sporation will generate endospore in a stress environment. Now what is the endospore structure? If you render this in the lecture, we talk about it very briefly. There is a couple of layers. Basically, you're going to have a coat. You have a exporian coat, exporian. We also have a structure called the cortex. Now, cortex is very similar to the bacterial cell wall. This is Composed by polysaccharide, something similar to peptidoglycan. But these are not really important for the endospore to survive or protect in the stress environment. This is like an outer layer. The more important is, is this in the center. The center, we have two structures. Number one, we call it CADPA. This is called calcium. D, calcium dipro acid, diproconic acid. It's called calcium dipro diproconic acid. D -O -O. Conic acid. And another one which is called small soluble acid DNA or acid is small soluble DNA. 
those are the major structure inside of this center to helping the bacteria survive in the stress environment. Okay, now why do we want to do endospore? In endospore thing, we want to know the two things. Number one, is there an endospore? Number two is where is endospore? Because the location of the endospore is genetic dependent, the location that could be right in the center, that could be right in the corner, we call it terminal. Like you go to the airport, there's a terminal. Or between the center and terminal, we call it the suburb terminal. And it is genetic dependent. So that's why we wanted to do the endospore. We will know the location so we know whether, what kind of the bacteria it is. So when we finish about this, then we're going to talk about how we're going to do the endospore thing. Okay, how we do the endospore thing? Because endospore has this very, we call it a rigid, R I. GID, very rigid and a tough structure. So you just put a basic dye there, it's not going to be stained. Therefore, but the very important, the key step of the endospore stain is we call it so called a heat steaming or heat steam. That is important. Okay, so how we do that? Now, first of all, is smear preparation. That's exactly the same when we do all the staining, including air dry heat fixing. Now the second thing is that when you have a bacteria there put in, let's say we put bacillus subtilis there, we're going to have to do is flooding the surface with mala chai to green. So I have a green color there, so I'll just use the green color to do it. This is, you have to do the flooding, not like a wind drop in the center. You have to cover the whole surface of the glass light. So we call it the flooding with mala chite green. This is the number two step in, important. Now number three step, we call it heat steaming. Heat steaming, which means you're going to use heat to heating the malachite green dye. This usually need take five minutes. Because of this heat steaming, the malachite green can be go inside to stain in those spots. There is two ways to do. One way to do is using Bunsen burner. back and forth on the surface. I'll show you how to do it. Second, is using 70 degrees Celsius water bus. So one is actually uh, heat steaming on the surface. Another one is heat steaming on the bottom. We tried the both on the lab, both are work very well. Now after that, we will let it cool down, rinse a little bit, then we do a counter stain we use saffron. Okay, so we do a counter stain with, with saffron. Now, what is the endospore stain looks like finally? I'll show you some of the picture. So basically what you're gonna see the endo endospore. It's like lots of this area of green. And there is a little bit of like uh, pink color that's we call it a trash not really something we care about. You will see this like a bubble. This is like a bubble there. This is the endospore. Okay? Now, because endospore is generate for the protection and in the stress environment. So, 
It is different from the gram stem. The endospore stem, we need to use very old culture. Usually, it's more than 48 hours to even five days because we want to have the bacteria to create endospore. And that is important. So instead of we using young culture, for endospore stem, we usually prepare at least two days or even one week before to let the bacteria has endospore. So that is different from the gram stem. Gram stem, we have to use a very young culture. Okay, so that's something uh, we, we, we want to mention. Now, in the real life, the endospore is really at risk. So let's say lots of you may be using low temperature, long time cooking. So in the morning, you're preparing a soup. Okay, the soup you have uh, putting a hot pot. So you have those like a beef, stew, you're gonna have some carrots. Okay, then you have some tomatoes. Let's say you go to hiking, you say, you're gonna put it in a hot pot. The hot pot is only 50 degrees Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius. Then you're cooking like eight hours. You go to hiking, then you come back. You said, okay, everybody have one bowl, bowl of the soup. This is usually gonna have a problem. You have a carrot, you have a tomato, those are from soil. Very easy to contaminate with either crosstrian or bacillus. Then you have a low temperature, 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. This low temperature of heating will kill lots of the vegetative bacteria, but the endospore will be dominant. Plus, you have a beef stew. The beef stew, when you put in the solution, when you put in the hot pot, it will generate, actually, is we call it a beef extract broth. Remember, we talked about in the lecture, this is a major ingredient of a bacterial media. So you are cultivation the endospore bacteria. So this is a very risk. Therefore, we usually recommend you to do, at least to avoid the 40 to 140 degree Fahrenheit, which is actually uh, 4.5 to 60 degree Celsius, that dangerous zone. This we call it a dangerous zone, because this will be favorable the endospore to growing, especially when you get close to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Lower heat, mild heat, killing all the vegetative cells, endospore cell is dominant, do dominant. Okay, so this is what we talk about the endospore. And uh, uh, Lee, we're working with me, we're going to do the demo of the endospore, how to, we'll show you up how to do. And I hope, Again, the university opens September 25th, then we can come here to do the practice. Otherwise, you just look at the video. Okay, thank you.